In the last lecture, we talked about R module homomorphisms and gave several examples. We'll start this lecture by giving a criterion for how to tell whether a map between two R modules is an R module homomorphism. And then we'll talk more about the structure of the set of R module homomorphisms between two R modules, M and N. So we're going to take a long proposition with several parts, proposition two in section 10.2, and divide it up a little bit and talk about the different parts separately. Let's begin with this criterion to tell when a map is an R module homomorphism. So let's say M and N are R modules. A map V from M to N is an R module homomorphism if and only if V of R dot X plus Y equals R dot V of X plus V of Y for all X and Y in the module M and R in the ring R. All right, so uh, what's the idea here is what does it mean for phi to be an R module homomorphism? It means that it's a homomorphism of abelian groups, phi of x plus y equals phi of x plus phi of y for all x and y and m, and phi of r dot x equals r dot phi of x for all x in m and r in the ring, so that uh, phi is compatible with the action of r on m and on n. So you can just compare these two conditions with this one. So for example, I'm not going to do all of the details here, but for example, if you take this condition and you take R equals one, then because you have a unital module, it has to be the case that one dot X equals X for all X in your module M. Uh, same thing over for the R module N, one dot V of X has to be equal to V of X. So we're exactly seeing in this case that V of X plus Y equals V of X plus V of Y. And what about this second condition that we need? Well, if you take Y equals zero, certainly R dot X plus zero is R dot X and R dot V of X plus V of zero. Well, V of zero has to be zero because this is a homomorphism of abelian groups. So uh, if you take Y equals zero, you see that the second uh, condition automatically holds as well. So uh, this is very similar to some of the work that we've done earlier with group homomorphisms and ring homomorphism. So I'll leave it to you to write down like a fully detailed proof of this proposition. Okay, let's now use this criterion to tell when a map is an R module homomorphism to say something about the structure of the set of R module homomorphisms between two R modules, M and N. So let's say M and N are our R modules, and phi and psi will be two R module homomorphisms from M to N. We're going to define phi plus psi by saying what it does to every element of the module M. It'll send x to phi of x plus psi of x. And we claim that with this definition, phi plus psi is also an R module homomorphism from M to N, that the sum of two R module homomorphisms is also an R module homomorphism. With this operation, we claim that the set of these R module homomorphisms is not only a set, but it's an abelian group. OK. If you have the additional condition that R is commutative, and this really is important here, then for any R in the ring, you can define R times phi by saying what it does to every element of this R module M. It'll send X to R dot phi of X. So now we can define uh, a new uh, function from M to N using uh, this definition. And the claim is that with this definition, R times V is also an R module homomorphism from M to N. And more than that, so now given a ring element and an R module homomorphism, we can define a new R module homomorphism. And with this action of R, the abelian group 
of R module homomorphisms from M to N is not just an abelian group, but it's an R module. What is the action of R on this abelian group? It is this one. R dot phi is this new R module homomorphism. All right, so I won't give a fully detailed proof here. Dummett and Foote don't either, but I wanna give a sketch and talk about sort of some of the highlights. Well, what do you need to do for the first part of this proposition? You have to show that phi plus psi really is an R module homomorphism. So how do you check that phi plus psi is an R module homomorphism? This is a nice opportunity to use this proposition that we proved uh, above, which is see what happens when you apply phi plus psi to R dot X plus Y. So you can check that phi plus i really does satisfy the things that you need it to satisfy in order to be an R module homomorphism. And it's a good exercise to really write down those details and check that you believe this statement. Okay, if you believe that, then what's next to do? You wanna show that this set of R module homomorphisms from M to N is an abelian group. So you have to check that it satisfies the axioms of being an abelian group. So uh, we've seen that, okay, you can now add to uh, R module homomorphisms and get another one. Um, it's clear that this addition is associative. You can check that that is true. Uh, we have the, the zero, the additive identity here. Uh, you can think about what the zero R module homomorphism should be and checking that every element has an inverse. Well, once you know what the zero uh, homomorphism is, you can imagine what psi should be in terms of phi so that they add to this identity element. All right, so it's good to really check those details here. So what I wanna talk about in the rest of this video is this last claim here that if R is commutative, you can define this R times phi by this uh, description of what it does to elements of your module. And it really is an R module homomorphism. And with this action, this abelian group turns into an R module. And the thing I wanna focus in on is where does the commutativity of R get used? Like it really is important that R is commutative, uh, but how are we using this in this argument here? So I'll pause and erase, and then I'll talk about that issue. Let's talk about this issue of where the commutativity of R gets used in the last part of this proposition. Well, if R1 phi defined as it is defined here is going to be an R module homomorphism from M to N, then certainly it must be true that R1 phi applied to R2 dot X has to be the same thing as R2 dot R1 phi of X. And this has to be true for all X in the module M and all R2 in the ring, that R1 phi has to behave nicely with respect to the action of R on our modules M and N. So let's check in great detail why this is true when R is commutative. So what is R1 phi applied to R2 dot X? Well, by definition of R1 phi, what is R1 phi applied to anything? Well, it's R1 dot phi applied to that anything. So it's R1 dot phi of R2 dot X. That's just the definition of R1 phi. And now uh, phi is an R module homomorphism. So certainly it is true that phi of R2 dot X is R2 dot phi of X, right? So that's part of what it means for phi to be an R module homomorphism. And we know that phi is an R module homomorphism. Okay, and then uh, phi of X, that's some element of this R module N. N is an R module. It must be the case that R1 dot R2 dot some element of N is R1 times R2, where the product now is happening in the ring R acting on that element of N. So this is using that N is an R module. All right. So now we have the product R1, R2. And remember our goal is to get R2 acting on R1 phi applied to X. So, 
Over here, we have R1, then R2. And over here, we have an R2, then we have an R1. So when R is commutative, we can switch the order of this multiplication. We can only do that when R is commutative. I mean, if R is not commutative, there's going to be some pair, R1 and R2, where this just isn't true. OK, but in the case that R is commutative, we have this is equal to R2 times R1 dot d of x. And now, again, because n is an R module, this is R2 acting on R1 dot phi of x. And now using the definition of what R1 phi is, R1 dot phi of x is R1 phi applied to x. So that, again, is using this definition here. And this is the thing that we needed to be true all along. So in the case that R is commutative, we can check that this really is an R module homomorphism. So, uh, sorry, in the case that R is commutative, we can check this thing that needs to be true if R1 phi really is an R module homomorphism. There are some other things to check as well. Like, I mean, it must be true that R1 phi uh, is a homomorphism between abelian groups, M and N, but that's straightforward to check. So I'll leave that uh, to you given that we've done this sort of trickier part. So then uh, you can believe that this actually is an R module homomorphism. And uh, once you know this is an R module homomorphism, you can check that this really does turn this abelian group into an R module. What do you have to check? You have to check the axioms for what it means to be an R module. All of them are pretty straightforward. But there really are some details to check, and I'll leave that to you.